Hi, everyone. Welcome to Monday Market Update Time. I'm Sam, Head Analyst at CCO. I'm going to walk you through uh, just some insights and general thoughts around where the market sits. And uh, we're just going to have a look at some charts today as well. Let's start today on the big one, the S&P 500 futures. So we've known through 2020 and, and a bit before that, that crypto is now a macro asset class, meaning it is influenced by the big picture items, the traditional financial markets, it is essentially moving just on the liquidity that's being moved into the market. That is an oversimplification, but like tech stocks, crypto and Bitcoin are now seen as that type of extension. So we're looking at S&P 500 and yes, we've been tightly correlated with it through last year, all through this, this downtrend. And uh, also at the beginning of this year, when the S&P actually started moving higher, I would also argue that Bitcoin and gold moved together at, at a certain point through this era before S&P moved higher. So that is all fascinating. But what the what the dynamic that we've seen recently is uh, the S&P is actually broken out of this uh, downtrend that was in through all of 2022, this correction bear market, whatever you want to call it. So it's made its way out of it and it's come back down to retest the 200 day moving average. So haven't been above that since well back here at the top of the bull market. So we just have to keep that in mind that we've come back down and we've seen an aggressive reaction uh, once above this trend line back down on the 200 day moving average. Now, uh, if we've seen that reaction in the past, Bitcoin and crypto would have absolutely blasted higher, maybe back to 24, 25,000, but it did not. In fact, it went the other way. So there's a bit of a, and I hate to use this word, decoupling, where the correlation just breaks. So the S&P goes one way and Bitcoin goes another. But the issues that we're seeing in the short term, just like FTX, there are uh, larger fundamental issues that cropped up or a catalyst that happened in crypto in the crypto sphere as a whole versus happening in traditional. So what happened um, on the last 48 hours has been, uh, well, in the last week, let's say, has been a tremendous onslaught of new fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market. And fear, uncertainty, doubt doesn't mean, oh, that's fake news, blah, blah, blah. Fear, uncertainty, doubt is serious concerns around the market and especially crypto and same with traditional markets. This is all psychology based. All these candles you see on the chart are just traders or investors on the other end of each other agreeing or disagreeing on a price and, and the actual price dip will move according to that on those buy and sell levels. So psychology matters so much, even if, uh, let's say, some of these um, FUD items don't have much merit to them, they still will affect the market in some way or another. Some are more serious than others, which I'll get into right here. So uh, this was a really great tweet by Miles, and it summarizes essentially what we've got to look out for in 2023. And why is this going to be a choppy as hell year with inflation, all that raging through the macro? Um, but if we look here, we're just going to go through. So Mount Gox, 142,000 Bitcoin unlocked. Now, I hear that every single year. I'm always super, super skeptical of Mount Gox. I don't think it really has any bearing on this market whatsoever. You look a bit deeper, that 142,000 unlock has already been pre-sold to larger market makers, miners, funds, all that at a discounted rate. A lot of them aren't going to sell their holdings, but still, you can't discount that this is going to have a little psychological impact in shorter term uh, mindsets if there's a, a massive unlock. Uh, but I'm fairly confident that we would see just a small sell on the market, but you just don't know. Um, however, my research you know, last year, I hear it every single year, so I've done my research every single time, and it just looks as though this is a bit of a, a non-event, but it always loves to reach the media and scare a few newbies. So just keep that in mind. Shanghai upgrade with Ethereum withdrawal. So uh, this new upgrade coming up this month with Ethereum actually allows a lot of validators to uh, unstake the Ethereum uh, that's that's on their books. So that will create sell pressure. It doesn't mean that you know there's going to be a mass sell off of Ethereum on the market, but there's going to be some people who have locked away their Ethereum uh, in these validators earning a yield. They're going to want to sell or realize profit losses, uh, whatever. That is something we have to maintain in our mindset when we're looking at Ethereum because the Ethereum charts actually look really, really nice over these last few months, um, you know, reach the top of a range. Again, I'll have a look in a second. Right, you know what? No, let's go straight to the Ethereum chart. So Ethereum chart um, has been looking pretty great over this, um, again, this last you know, six to eight months. Didn't even make a lower low when Bitcoin did in, in the FTX saga. So um, if we have a look over here, I'll just zoom out a little bit more. This is the four hour, but FTX happened around November in this area here. Bitcoin actually made a lower low. So this is the lunar low and Bitcoin made a lower low but Ethereum actually made a higher low. So it never made that secondary low, which is great. Never since then, it's just been showing relative strength and it's trying to get itself, well, did try and get itself back at the top of this range, oscillated in this flag-like structure. And then it's been just trying to break down. I do not like the look of this. And if there's a big Ethereum unlock, 
uh, you can bet your bottom dollar there's going to be pressure to the downside. So um, as much as I've been liking Ethereum up to this point, it just has failed to break up to the upside. So 1720 is that area above this level, which you start to get really, really bullish on Ethereum moving to 2000 and higher, just hasn't proved itself. And this is a bit of a, uh, you know, if you're a shorter term trader, you look at that as a short uh, potential entry around that point go back to some of these other ones this is the real big one for me and this is what i think has caused a lot of that uh, downside volatility as the stock market has risen higher that's silvergate collapse there's a few major banks in the us that really facilitate crypto bank transactions silvergate and signature bank are both of those they're both in a lot of trouble uh, i believe both have reached you know all-time lows in stock prices there's, there's a lot of rumors going around that they're totally going under because and this is the fallout this is the bottom body's still floating to the top of the water after FTX. This is not the end by any means, uh, but it causes that shorter term uh, uh, unsettling of maybe some larger investors or some people or traders wanting to get in front of it and have inside knowledge and they're selling off. So uh, I think that's exactly what we saw in the last 48 hours. But yeah, big issue, macroeconomic shift. So yeah, inflation, all that looking a bit higher for longer with the Fed raising interest rates. Uh, regulatory uh, crypto clampdown. Now, this is a big one that you really want to pay attention to in terms of Operation Choke Point, which is happening um, right now in the US after FTX has really created that environment where they want to turn the screws and the SEC is leading that charge by looking at uh, securitization laws and uh, essentially wanting to turn most altcoins into securities. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but it was always coming. If this is shocking to anyone where well, you haven't really done your research. Uh, Regulation is always, always coming to clean up the space, clean up stable coins. It should be welcomed, but we just don't want it to be too aggressive where it's driving innovation uh, offshores from the United States, where uh, the major market, cap sorry, the major capital markets in the world are based in the US. That's where the liquidity is. Uh, you know, Asia is catching up, sure, but um, it, a lot of that capital is in the US, and that's where we see a lot of the investment coming. So it's not ideal. Uh, if uh, a lot of that moves offshore. So just please keep an eye on that. And it's probably going to make uh, 2023 um, a really choppy affair. Okay, um, what's that line there? I'm drawing I'm not sure. That's okay. We'll keep that as it is. Just dropping off over to Bitcoin here. So uh, like I said before, the S&P 500 was roaring and you know blasting up from its 200-day moving average. Meanwhile, Bitcoin had a pretty nice epic drawdown there, 7%. Uh, for me, just structurally, this looks like the bearish divergence has played out. So you can see there on these two peaks, the second peak was higher than the last. And we teach all this in our course uh, in terms of in the mastermind group, at least. But in the course, we'll show you how to look at, you know, lines, higher lows, higher highs, all that. And, and also the bearish side of things. But uh, for me, just at a very high level, the bullish momentum is trailing off as price was climbing, which means that the bears are actually getting on in control. And that's when you want to look at selling, at least taking some profit off. And you can see here that it, it just looks reasonably weak. And the next area down here for mine is down here. And you also have the Bitcoin 200 day moving average at around about 20,000, just a little bit lower. But that area there is going to be absolutely key. So uh, do pay attention to that. Bitcoin just feeling that stress of, you know, running into 25,000, not being able to break it. And now we're really looking for that floor uh, to, to, to form. And if we just go in a little bit deeper, um, you can just see that it's just taken the wind out of the side. This dump here is just flatlining here without any follow through. Um, excuse me, the bears haven't followed through as yet. Uh, but the, the bulls have not been able to rescue this either. And this is a pretty ugly sort of setup here where, you know, you really want uh, that this level here, uh, 22,700 be reclaimed for us to have a little bit of confidence that we're just moving higher. And this was, um, it, you know, a bit of a, a higher low dip before we go higher. But I think this is the area that would cause a bit of maximum pain. Some things rolling over momentum, not looking too great. This is not a time to be really in deep with altcoins. Uh, especially with Bitcoin looking weak. Uh, we covered Ethereum, so we won't cover that again. Uh, this is another darling uh, that everyone likes at the moment, Matic. It has had a pretty epic drawdown from this high here. And this is why you cannot get too in love with anything just in the short term when Bitcoin suffers that severe volatility. This is not a bull market. There are opportunities that you can have, you know, those shorter term gains, but this is the environment for longer term investors to really analyze what's going on and position themselves for 2025 with the Bitcoin halving and whatnot. But altcoins, it just doesn't have the liquidity for the massive follow throughs that everyone's expecting. I just wanted to get that across. I've gotten that across in the advanced group this week as well. But Matic, for example, has so much hype around it. Now, there is substance to it, sure, but it's breaking down beneath, you know, key Fibonacci level and also a key horizontal and now it's back into this massive range do not like that at all it wants to recover that as soon as possible and if i just zoom in here just lost that 
a, almost like a right shoulder here in a, in a descending wedge, just crunched down below and just doesn't look too flash. All right, well, just on that as well, make sure to, if you aren't already a subscriber, I know a lot of you are, make sure to tune into our newsletter releases every single Thursday. So last week, I just looked into the layer two and why it is still such an important narrative as Ethereum looks to scale over the next 12 months. Um, again, short term is a lot of noise, a lot of chop. Uh, but if you're paying attention to those longer term investment cycles, you know, layer two is something you want to be paying attention to. Um, and just go down here. I've got a bit of a Top Gun, top gun theme ramming through it there. And uh, yeah, I just go into our top three picks on where we see the future around layer twos. Um, you know, you've got AIs, that shorter term speculation that just sort of had a nice pop there, a nice reminder of what is possible during alt seasons and bull markets. Uh, but for those longer term investors who are looking for that, that super, super substance, um, it's layer twos for me, especially in this next little transition phase as Ethereum starts to upgrade. Uh, also, if you are a, a client of ours, please leave us a review. We've got a couple of five-star reviews that just pop back in now uh, from some of our mastermind clients. So if you're a VIP member or a graduate and you're looking to upgrade yourself to the mastermind level, what we offer there, please read this one here from Crypto Life and also Vanessa. Uh, they're two amazing reviews and they're two recent VIP clients that have actually upgraded as well. If you are not a client, a VIP, VIP member or a newsletter subscriber, read some of these as well and just get an idea of what we offer and, and what our clients are feeling. Uh, also, please feel free to re um, read some of these reviews from two star and one star. I know we've got a one star review around our newsletter. Uh, look, we responded and you know thought some of the criticisms weren't valid. Some of them were. And we've actually upgraded our newsletter to incorporate more actionable content for readers as well. And you can read our response there to that one star review. But uh, you know these things happen. And uh, um, yeah, the 95% the, the of the five star reviews really tell the story. Uh, and that one star was about our newsletter, not our course as well. So I'm um, just throwing that out there. Guys, if you've enjoyed this uh, episode, make sure to uh, tune us in for the altcoin bubble this Wednesday. And I uh, can't wait to talk to you then. All right. See ya. Bye. Thank you.